Hey YouTube, welcome to the Off Grid Mountain Homestead. Today I'm off the homestead over at Southern Prepper Ones. Just got through putting in a thousand watts of panel for his Blue Eddy machine. There's five 200 watt panels in series. So got everything mounted, racked in. So it's just the first, the first part of the uh, solar array that's gonna go on this Blue Eddy machine. I'm gonna show you in a second. So the main point of today's video, I wanna show you a few things you may want to include in your portable power station slash solar generator install if you're going to do a semi-permanent or permanent installation. So number one, we're up here on the roof is panels and proper racking to withstand wind and snow loads and things like that. So just a little shot of the glass first and then I'm going to go inside and uh, look at the Blue Eddy. And this is the Blue Eddy AC500. So big monster Blue Eddy. But just showing you what a thousand watts of glass will do under under cloudy weather, rainy weather. Got a thousand watts up there and only putting out 126 watts. So, you know, the amount of panels you have and PV input is very important for cloudy or poor weather. But here's the machine. It's in a computer cabinet and the charge cord comes in from the side right here. This is the PV input. And this machine will take two different PV inputs, but we're only using one channel for the PV input today. And it loops through the computer cabinet and goes out the back. So I'm going to show you a few things that I would say would be bare minimum requirements if you've got a portable power station slash solar generator and you're using it in a semi-permanent to permanent fashion. A uh, couple of things that, at bare minimum that you're going to need. So hold tight and I'm going to show you what, what I did to make this a safer install. See the PV input from this panels on the roof comes in through this seal type conduit. Since it's an agricultural style building, we just ran seal type conduit on the bar joist. So, here's a couple of things I was telling you about that you'd need to, I recommend you put in on your solar generator portable power station. So, number one is lightning suppression or surge suppression. This particular surge protector right here with the little blue lights is a midnight solar 300 volt DC surge protector. It's got a 15 nanosecond reaction time. So, very good day-to-day -day use surge protector. So I highly recommend having some form of lightning suppression at bare minimum on your install because a portable power station is a very expensive investment. Thousands and thousands of dollars can be sunk into them. So why would you not add a $120 surge protector to your multi-thousand dollar machine? All right, number two, a disconnect. Yes, if you got a big, big solar array and a big solar generator, you could possibly have some arcing, some crossover arcing if you're disconnecting and connecting uh, when the panels are under load, depending on your machine and the way the charge controller works in it. But it's always good measure just to have a PV disconnect. This particular disconnect is made by Emo. I highly recommend this disconnect if you're using it for solar applica application, PV application. These are probably the best solar disconnects on the market. They're high quality, they're not very expensive. Uh, Depending on you know shipping delays and stuff like that, most of the time you can find these between you know eighty to a hundred dollars for this particular uh, four pole model. But I prefer the four pole. You got a little more options with it. Uh, gives you a little more you know stuff you can play around with, change around if you need be. It's got a little extra room in it. But yeah, highly recommend Emo disconnects. And you can see the Blue Eddy just did a MC4 box connector. So I will turn this disconnect off and I will show you what these box connectors look like. So hold on, let me get my MC4 tool and I'll show you. So you got the box connectors right there. I'm gonna try to slide the camera right here so you can see. Remember, I've got the disconnect off. I'm not disconnecting under load. You never want to disconnect under load. So you put your little MC4 connector in there and get it started, and they pop off. So you can see these, this is the wiring from the Blue Eddy right here. You see this is one of the channels, they got them labeled DC1 and DC2, but we're using one channel. But good way for portable power stations is to use these box connectors. Very handy to be able to uh, just connect and disconnect so you can use it on multiple machines. But if you use a, another machine, make sure you don't put too much PV, too high voltage on your PV array. Make sure it matches. Check your specifications on your panels. Check the specifications on your portable power station. Make sure all that matches up before connecting any PV leads to your portable power station. And I also wired it where the 
indicators for the surge protector work with the disconnect. So if you don't see lights during the daytime, that means something is wrong. And there's also a fuse link on the roof that I did not show you, but a fuse link is always a good idea to match it to your panels, whatever your max amperage is on your panels and your wires, make sure your wires match too, and fuse to protect the wire and the panel. But just some of my, my thoughts on what you, you should probably do to protect your investment. I said this setup right here, equipment wise, is less than 200 bucks for protection for your portable power station. Well worth it. I mean, one lightning strike and you could smoke several thousand dollars worth of equipment. So just cheap insurance, real easy to install, straightforward kind of stuff. Just helps protect your investment and keeps you safe. Uh, your equipment safe, so you know, highly recommend putting in a surge protection and a disconnect at bare minimum. So, hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks to Southern Pepper One for allowing me to come assist in his uh, PV install on this Blue Eddy. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit that like button if you don't mind. And uh, questions or anything, put in the comments. And if you're not subscribed, I greatly appreciate a subscription from you. Thank you for watching the Offer Mountain Homestead. Y'all have a nice day.